Hi, welcome. I'm Susan Blaine. I'm really excited to be here with David Gourlay today. Such a pleasure, and he's one of my brave guests today. <laughs> Hi, <Susan>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David is a senior uh, manager at uh, Major Gifts at OSEG, and OSEG mm -hmm. is Ottawa's sports and entertainment, entertainment. Um, group. Hi, welcome to Sharing with Susan B, telling stories from the heart. We're looking to inspire, telling stories of struggle, vulnerability, and lessons learned. Um, your dad was a diplomat, mm -hmm. so you've lived all over the world. You mm -hmm. grew up for the first 18 years in Europe and the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of your first jobs as a teenager was working in a lumber yard That's in right. UK. In London. And uh, but you wanted to be a baseball player, and that's mm -hmm. interesting because that comes mm -hmm. back around, doesn't mm -hmm. it? A baseball player or a guitarist like uh, Eric Clapton. That's right. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, that's a tough pick. But you went to Car Carleton University when you came mm -hmm. back to Ottawa mm -hmm. uh, for school, and you studied political science and law. You mm -hmm. worked on Parliament Hill. You had a mm -hmm. taste for that. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of found yourself back to this sort of baseball and mm -hmm. sports. And mm -hmm. so tell us about what you're really passionate about right now. Well, I'm I, Susan, I, I'm passionate about community. And, and that starts, you mentioned my father was the diplomat. So we lived in Baghdad, Iraq. We lived in uh, Brussels, Belgium. And we lived in London, England. And I think because I was uh, outside of the country, outside of the city so much, uh, you develop a real sense of identity. And, yeah. and also a lack of belongingness. And this is this quite ha this happens quite often with dip diplomatic kids. Yeah. Is they're outside the country, they hear a lot about, you know, Canada and Ottawa, but you don't know too much about it. And what would happen is um, when I was very young, we lived in Belgium, came back to Ottawa for a couple of years, and my dad was posted to Iraq. Now Iraq in How the old were late, you there? I was seven years old. Wow. And we didn't have the internet. We didn't have the technology that we have today. Day. So mm -hmm. tracking things like baseball scores and how the Montreal Canadiens are doing and the Montreal Expos, I really relied on the uh, Ottawa citizen coming in the diplomatic bag from Ottawa to Baghdad and it was always three weeks late. <laughs> and it was like Christmas morning for us because they had the movie listings and they had the sports scores and local news. Did you crave a taste of home? I did. Yeah. And, and that was really the decision that we as a family, um, particularly my parents of course, had to make in 1988 when the five-year term for my dad came up in London was do we go home or perhaps there's an opportunity for my father to retire from government and pursue a private sector career in Europe Abroad. based on, on his experience. And, and I, I was the troublemaker. I'm an only child, oh, so I'm yeah. a huge troublemaker. <laughs> and I said, I want to go home. I want to learn what it's like to be Canadian. I want to learn what it's like to live in Ottawa because I had so little exposure. Again, I had a little bit of exposure, and I often talk about how proud I am about being from Canada. Uh, I ran for council last year because yeah. I wanted to represent the community born and raised in and schooled in, but I also have this international background. Well, it probably gave you a stronger sense of community than most because you lived abroad, right? That's and right. You, you crave this sort of connection to That's right. community. That's right. And so tell us about the work that you're doing with the OSEG Foundation. So very proud to work for an organization like OSEG where every day I have conversations about the power of sport. Yeah. And sport has been part of who I am as an identity. And yeah. this is something that that's very important to me is we all need an identity. We all need to be able to talk about who we are as individuals. So, so what we do at the OSEG Foundation is we have conversations about sport philanthropy. What does that mean? That means bringing kids off the sideline and into the game to reach their full potential. Mm. Some people will define that in other ways. We believe sport is a very powerful community vehicle that will allow kids, again, to be included, to not be marginalized, to not be excluded to not feel like they can't accomplish their dreams. Yeah. Um, one great example is the LGBTQ community. Yeah. Um, kids, we want kids to look at sport as uh, an opportunity for acceptance and for safety. So and we level, want them to level feel- Level platform for exactly. everybody, right? Exactly. It, it, this is equality at its best. Yeah. It's hard to believe that we're in a, an era that you still have to push for that kind of inclusion. Isn't it? Yeah, Isn't it really it? is. It, so. to, to have these conversations, though, is very empowering. Yeah. I want it to be a narrative that's at the community level. The oh, amateur like sport organizations, the high schools, the universities, the colleges, whether they have autism, special needs, mm -hmm. whether they're a girl, they all feel sport 
gives them that opportunity to reach their full potential. I love that. If anybody can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Thank that. you. So tell us what uh, one of the biggest professional struggles you had. Well, I started a baseball team in Ottawa, and baseball has not always succeeded in this city. But my vulnerability came in the fact that so many people said, you'll never succeed. Mm -hmm. This is a waste of time. This will never work. Naysayers. Naysayers. Yeah, dream stealers. And what I've, what I've come to learn, Susan, is that vulnerability is a positive value. It's okay to be vulnerable because mm. people who are generally vulnerable and will acknowledge their vulnerability, not in a negative way, not in a bad way. Well, some people associate the word vulnerability with uh, weakness. I know right. I did. Right. I certainly did at one point, but it's really a strength. And power. It's, it's a strength because people who are vulnerable and acknowledge that and confront it and then work with it, they're generally compassionate. Yeah. They're generally caring. Yes. They are generally empathetic. Yes. And they believe in what they're doing. And that gives them the confidence to go out and to, to say to the naysayers, <laughs> you know what, I'm going to try this differently. And that's exactly what I did. And you did it. Yeah. We brought in charities. We created a charity, the Miracle League of Ottawa. We brought in local businesses. We brought in local charities. We brought in local service clubs. I did an entire strategy around in the communities around the ballpark. You really engage the community. Alta Vista, Overbrook, community association, so that everybody believed in what we were doing. Yeah, that's the way. That's the way to and do it. And when we secured an owner, it was a turnkey solution as opposed to hoping for the best. Yeah, and brilliant. here we are. We're still playing baseball yeah, today. Yeah, congratulations. And we won the championship Yay! in 2016. Wow. <laughs> One of the things that we talked about was um, the lessons learned from mm -hmm. some of the struggles. And I loved, uh, you talked about taking a risk. Baseball was not a risk. It was me fulfilling my own potential to make a difference yeah. in this community. I like that. And I have families who still stop me on the street, come up to me at Red Blacks games or whatever it may be and say, thank you because you've given us an affordable, fun family venue to enjoy our time together in the summer. Doesn't that make it all... It, feel worthwhile? Totally. So what advice would you give your younger self quickly? Have some focus. Uh, understand your limitations because you never want to spread yourself too thin. And we all have limitations. We do have limitations. We're right? human. We're right. human. It's okay to say. Again, it's about potential. Yeah. It's not about taking risk. It's about fulfilling potential and making sure that what you invest your time and energy in is the right thing for you. Yeah. and what you believe That's going to bring you the most fulfillment. I love that. How about some fun rapid fire questions so we can sure, learn a little bit it. more about David Gurley? Yeah. Like who's your favorite superhero? Uh, definitely Batman. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Uh, favorite food indulgence? Oh, ice cream. Ice cream. I, what I what can't flavor? Resist. Oh, it's got to be chocolate. Chocolate, yes. of course. Uh, someone you admire? I greatly admire my father for his uh, diplomatic career. My father is definitely a, a, a role model. That's nice. Something not too many people know about you. Ooh. Oh, good one. <laughs> uh, I have a professional baseball card collection oh, at home. Of course you do. And Danielle, Danielle is very kind to let me have a small nook in our, in our house <laughs> where I can put up. And I frame them all. I've got them all custom framed. I've got them all organized in binders. Awesome. I've got a, a 1954 Roberto Clemente rookie card. Wow. That's worth, worth a couple thousand Sounds dollars. Like a, yeah. mo favorite movie? Book Jerry book? Maguire. Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> Taking your potential and seeing what you can do with it. Love that. What's something that always makes you smile, David? My family. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that all over your social media. What's your <laughs> definition of success in one sentence? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little repetitive, Susan. Uh, defining success is about reaching your full potential yeah. and yeah. providing yourself, not other people, not asking other people, but understanding what is inside of you that you can achieve and having that reward of knowing you've done something positive. Isn't, then isn't that the work a lot of us are sort of searching for to find that one thing? What is, is. that that gives me that sense of fulfillment? So I, I love that you were consistent in your messaging about that. Where you can learn more about David. So I'm on uh, all LinkedIn. social media. I'm on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. That's correct. That's where yeah. you can find yeah. out more about uh, David and oseg.ca. That's to learn yeah. More so about... osegfoundation.ca. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you for, for having joining me, me Susan. today Very and kind of being you. brave enough to talk about stuff. All right. There stuff. we go. <laughs> all right. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you.